Our special guest tonight is anything but a stranger. Our Imam, Sheikh Ibrahim Bashar Qaider, was raised in the greater Charlotte area in North Carolina. He holds a bachelor's degree in Sharia from the Islamic University of Medina, along with a bachelor's in chemistry from the University of North Carolina, Charlotte. He brings a wealth of knowledge in both secular and religious education. While you may be familiar with his academic success, you may not know that Sheikh Ibrahim enjoys adventures, reading, soccer, yes, swimming, coffee, and a good conversation. MashaAllah, we have greatly benefited from this dynamic personality and his sincerity ever since he joined us at MCC. And we look forward to many more years of the same. Inshallah, please let's go ahead and welcome Sheikh Ibrahim. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh, everybody. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim wa salat wa salam ala rasuli al-Amin wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in. I thank you guys for allowing me to give this very short talk. I'll try to keep it short, inshallah. Um, and I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to bless all the students and to protect them and to guide them to the best outcomes this life has to offer. So speaking of life, since I don't, I actually thought I had 30 minutes. Um, so I'm trying to shave it down. You guys know Shorma, right? You guys got to shave it down, right? So inshallah, we're going to shave down the talk a little bit and summarize what I have to offer inshallah. And it can be summarized in one phrase. Each moment is practice for the one that follows. Each moment is practice for the one that follows. And that is what defines success, practice. If we were to ask ourselves, what is success? A lot of people would say, well, having a nice degree or winning the Super Bowl or winning the, you know, the, the World Cup. And some people would say having a, you know, a loving spouse. Other people would say, you know, a good job. Other people say just being a good person or being a hafla. All of those things are successful, but they don't define success. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he defined it very simply. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he says in Surah Al-Hashr, for those hifaz that know this, لا يستوي أصحاب النار وأصحاب الجنة أصحاب الجنة هم الفائزون You cannot compare the people of hellfire with the people of Jannah. The people of Jannah are those who are successful. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala also says in Surah Ali Imran, فَمَنْ زُحْزِهَا عَنِ النَّارِ وَأُدْخِلَ الْجَنَّةَ فَقَدْ فَازْ Whoever drags themselves away from the hellfire and enters Jannah, then they have then they have succeeded. And so we can summarize the equation. We can make it a mathematical, mathematical equation, if you would. Success equals Jannah. It's as simple as that. And every moment in life is practice for the next so that you can finally reach that successful thing called Jannah. How does that translate to what we're going through today? To be successful in attaining Jannah, to attain Jannah, you have to be from those who have belief. It's not a hafal, it's not a doctor, it's not an engineer, it's a believer. Belief is what leads to success. The Sahaba had a very beautiful statement. The young, young Sahaba, the, the, the ones who were kids in the beginning of the, of the prophethood. They said that we were taught Iman before we were taught the Quran. And when we were taught the Quran, our Iman, increased and so it's not about memorizing what the phrases of the quran have to have to say i actually there's personal experience here i know um in my college days i met a christian man he's christian palestinian um and he was a half -lip. he's a christian but he's a half -lip. and he memorized it because he wanted to study the language of, of arabic and stuff and you know that was his research but the idea is being a half -lip, or memorizing the quran does not equal iman you have to train yourself and teach yourself the concepts of Iman. For those concepts to reside in your heart and finally become rooted, then you will be able to truly master what the Quran is trying to tell you and eventually lead, uh, and through the grace of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for his mercy to uh, allow us to be from those who are successful in entering Jannah. 
And so what are some of the concepts of Iman? The concepts of Iman could be tawakkul, reliance on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. There's another concept many people don't bring up. It's called qana'a. Qana'a means content, that you are uh, pleased with the things that you have around you. You're not hungry for the dunya. Rather, you're pleased with the little things. This is qana'a. It's one of the things that many people don't talk about. Another concept of Iman is izzah. Izzah is dignity. This is also one of the signs of Iman. That's why the, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, when he, when he talks about the believers, uh, that they have izza to those around them who are disbelievers. Another description of those who have Iman is ikhlas, sincerity. Rather, Iman itself is ikhlas, it is sincerity. Wholehearted sincerity for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Another description of Iman or another subcategory of Iman is hilm and rahmah, forbearance and mercy. A person who has belief in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will have mercy to those around because he believes that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will reward him for that. Another description or subcategory of Iman is tafa'ul. Tafa'ul is optimism. And this is summarized in a very simple ayah. Well, it's two ayahs. Inna ma'al usri yusra. With hardship comes ease. This is actually optimism encompassed in this very simple phrase. If you were to talk about what optimism is, you say, Inna ma'al usri yusra. With hardship comes ease. And so all of these ingredients, when you mix them together, you find something beautiful that we, that we, call, that we call iman. And these concepts are taught in the Quran. You know, we're taught to have fortitude. We're taught to have sabr. We're taught that life itself is not meant to be cozy. Life itself is meant to be hard. It's meant for work. You can rest and relax in Jannat al Naim ala al Araiki yanzurun on large or tall, uh, you know, mats where, where the people of Jannah are sitting and laughing. That is that's 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 when you can relax. But the dunya itself is not a time of relaxation. It's a time of difficulty. It's a time of hardship. It's a time of tribulation. Life itself. Life itself, life and death, they were created only as a test for us to see, for, for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to see which of us are the best in deeds. And so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he says also, highlighting this, sorry, when the Prophet ﷺ was going through a, a difficult time, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he revealed, do you think that you will be from the people of Jannah? And the, the example of those before you hasn't befallen you. They were touched with hardship and difficulty, and they were shaken. They were shaken. Here, Zalzala is not, it's, 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 it's more than just an earthquake. It's their whole world shaken before them until the messenger that's with them the messenger himself not just the companions of that messenger they say when is the when is the victory of allah coming and then allah subhanahu wa ta'ala follows in the ma'asiyasra the promise of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ala inna nasrullahi qareeb indeed the victory of allah is near and so life is difficulty it's a test it's a tribulation allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says surah al-ankabut alif lam mim am hasiba an-nas an yutraku an yaqulu amanna wa hum la yuftanun did people think that they can just say we believe without being tested? So the difficulties around us, a believer when he looks at it, he doesn't run away from it or question, why me? It's not about you. Everyone is gonna go through difficulty. Everyone is gonna face hardship. You can't think too much of yourself in that regards, right? Rather, you should feel honored. And when the challenge befalls a believer, he looks at it, with the eye of a tiger, as Mike Tyson says, right? The Sahaba, in the time of, uh, the, you guys mentioned that you were studying the Seerah of the Prophet ﷺ. From the Seerah of the Prophet ﷺ, one of the most monumentous uh, occasions that happened was the Battle of Al-Ahzab, or the Confederates. And so, when the Sahaba were surrounded, Medina was surrounded by 10,000 of all of the Arab tribes, ready to obliterate them. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he says, when the believers, they saw the scores of people before them, a number of people that they've never seen before. When the believers saw the Confederates, 
they said, this is what Allah and His Messenger had promised us. And Allah and His Messenger have spoken the truth. And that moment of difficulty only increased their submission to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and their belief. When a believer is faced with a challenge, he looks at it with optimism, and he looks at it with izzah, with dignity. And he approaches it as it should be approached, and he sees it as an opportunity to get closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Just as how all of the people before, including the prophets and the salihin and the shuhada, whenever they were faced with a tribulation or a difficulty, they had that positive mentality. Because it's not about this life. It's not about this life. This life is short, it's going to end. The things and the trinkets around you, the degrees and the people that are surrounding you, they're not going to follow you to the grave. What follows you to the grave is your amal, is your, or your deed. And one question, one question that matters the most is when the angels ask you, who are your Lord? And you say Allah. Because you've lived your whole life, every moment is a practice for the moment that comes next. And that final moment is when you're facing that question and you say Allah, because my whole life was Allah. And so COVID or any other difficulty or exams or whatever it may be, it's a test. And a test for the next moment to sharpen you so that when you get to that final moment that matters the most, you're able to surmount it and you're able to claim victory. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us from the faizin. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us from Ashab al-Jannah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us and guide us to what's best. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make our tribulations that we face an element of good for our lives, that make us better people and the best versions of ourselves. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, bless this community and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless the school and guide, guide us all to what's best and protect us all. I cut it just a little bit for time so you guys can have more for whatever's left in the program, inshallah. Jazakumullah khair. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Wa alaikum salam. Thank you so much. Jazakallah khair. You're in for a treat, Sheikh Ibrahim, because we are moving right on to our next portion. But Jazakallah khair for those words of wisdom. They are certainly very, very important right now. And we will definitely reflect on them. And as you can see on the screen, we are getting super ready for our game. This is our superintendent, Mr. Habib Ghadri. And together with the facilitator, we have our Ustada Mariam Salman. She will also be uh, assisting behind the scenes. And let's get this game going. Mr. Qadri, it's all yours. Asalaamu As Alaikum. Ladies and gentlemen, we are going to begin our game. So just want to go first and foremost, we want to thank Sheikh Ibrahim. May Allah reward you for uh, reminding us. And then he had some good points about being optimistic and having to walk with Allah. So today's game is going to be about individuals who stayed optimistic when they had challenges. So the first question, as Ustada Mariam Salman had, was nice enough to put these questions together. So we are going to go, which question we should go? Kamran Fortawala said, no, question number four. Everyone, let's hit number, question number four. Let's see. Which prophet was tested by health skin disease for several years? Was it A, Prophet Yahoo, Prophet Ayyub, Prophet Adam alayhi salam, or Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi salam. So Prophet Yaqub alayhi salam, Prophet Ayyub alayhi salam, Prophet Adam alayhi salam. Let's see, we got one. We got Musa Harun, we got B, Alina Khan said B. Let's see, what, what else we got here? Everyone, so Azra, Amira, okay, good job. And the answer is Prophet Ayyub. All right, and then he made that dua, inni masani wa dura wa anta hamar rahimeen. So may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that's a great dua to also use when you're feeling sick and so on and so forth. Allah's mercy will be there. Let's go ask, let's for another question. Well, what do we got here? Uh, let's go, we got the question. All right, the question. Uh, Manyar family, number, question number one. We'll go with Manyar family's uh, uh, request here. Which prophet was tested by being swallowed by a whale? Prophet Musa alayhi salam. Prophet Yunus alayhi salam. Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Prophet Yusuf alayhi wa which one was swallowed by a whale? Man, if I was like, I'm not talking about Nemo, Nemo. I'm talking about a big whale. And then he makes his dua. And the answer is, do, 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 do. Prophet Yunus alayhi wa sallam. So mashallah, that's what we got. Uh, you know, making that dua. So, you know, oh, oh, come on, this is easy, mashallah. All right, Mr. Hafiz Saab. <laughs> All right, let's go with the next question. 
Let's go with the next. Ayana Z said number two. Ayana Z's request for question number two. Question number two. Who can? Which prophet was tested by being thrown into a fire? Whoa. I mean, okay, was this Prophet Yusuf alayhi salam? Was it Prophet Ayyub alayhi salam? Was it Prophet Ibrahim alayhi salam? Was it Prophet Ishaq alayhi salam? Which one? We got some C here. We got C here. Prophet Ibrahim. Okay. Where? I, I mean, everyone's going, okay. Well, oh, just say the class says C. All right. Umar Hussein says C. Right. Umar Muhammad says C. All right. That's what I'm talking about. Think about this. This one, he was thrown and he makes his dua. Has to be Allah. He goes into this fire. Allah makes it all cool and calm. That was awesome, mashallah. Good job, Zahra. Good. All right. So the next question, Zahra is asking Musa. Okay, let's see who has got Musa Khan. Musa Khan, question number six. He is making the request. So let's go to question number six from Musa Khan here. Which prophet was tested by a king who said that he was God? <laughs> Stuff like this guy thought he was God Almighty, right? So which prophet had to deal with a crazy guy like that? who thought he was God, killing people, torturing people, making them into slaves? Was it Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam? Was it Prophet Yusuf Alaihi Wasallam? Was it Prophet Ismail Alaihi Wasallam? Was it Prophet Musa Alaihi Wasallam? What we got here? Let's see. We got, mm, do, 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 do. let's see, I see, okay, okay, I see some letters here. Cool, cool, cool. Okay, everyone's going, okay, okay. All right, Iswat, Iswat, all right, okay, she says D2. All right, and the answer is... Musa alayhi salam. And, and think about the Prophet Musa saying, and think about how crazy this guy must have been. He saw, he saw rain that came as fire. He saw a stick that became a, a snake, right? He saw a locust. He saw so many unique uh, 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 miracles happen. And, the, and think about this miracle. Is a ocean, a soul sea separates. He sees Prophet Musa alayhi salam going. He goes, you know what? I, I can do this too. And he grounds. So that's how arrogant this guy was. So mashallah, awesome. Good job there. Good job there. Uh, and getting the right answer. Let's go with that. Let's see. Let me see. Okay, okay. Uh, let's see. Amira. Okay. Who, who has that thing? Portawal family. We, we, I think you guys already had one re request. So, uh, so you know, we'll go. Wait, you know what? That's right. Kamran was separate. So this is another Portawal family who said question number three. Let's go with question number three. Question number three, what it can be. My name is Mr. Khadri. I'm going to read question number three. Which prophet was tested by being asked to sac be sacrificed by his fa father, Ibrahim Asam? Man. Oh, the Barkat family responds here. So they're saying, Prophet Yusuf was he's like, hey, you know, son, I had a dream. I need to sacrifice you. Whoa, that is like, okay, dad, you feeling okay? Prophet Yusuf al -Salam, Prophet Ismail al -Salam, Prophet Ishaq al -Salam, Prophet Yahub al -Salam. Who can it be? Let us go and see. Everybody's answering. Miss, uh, the answer is B. Oh, yes. Let's see. Let's see if everyone's thinking it's B. Is that who Mrs. Ustad Maryam uh, Salah Salman? Yes, Prophet Ismail al -Salam. Awesome. And he was also... The prophet with uh, Ibrahim alayhi salam, where they built, uh, anyone know that? This is the side question. They built something. Ismail alayhi salam and his father built the, uh, do, 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 do. Let's see if anyone can put this on. Who come up? Alina Khan, Kaaba, Sadaf, Kaaba, Kaaba, Nyar, Fahmi, Iswad, Najwad, Muhammad, Sparkat. Oh, yeah, I like it. Good job, good job. All right, all right. People are catching. That was an extra bonus question right there. Let's go. Uh, who had we have that? Let's go to the, the, someone else here. Okay, we got okay, the wild family already had one. Did someone else want to ask a question? Umar Hussein, new person. Number, question number 10. He wanted number, question number 10. Umar Hussein, let's go here. Which group of Muslims are being tested recently? Ooh, yes, you know what? So sometimes in the past, are people right now are being challenged. People in Syria, is it Palestine? Is it Burma? China, Yemen, when they're being challenged, but they're being optimistic, they're making dua, they're, they're, they're being steadfast. They're having these, and who are these individuals? Let's see, everyone's going, okay, I got Islam, Razara, Kaka, okay, Barakat family, okay. Uh, okay, what, what was the answer? Ustada Maryam. <laughs> all of the above. I want you guys to all make dua today for all these individuals from the past who had suffered or is going through tough times, people who are getting, uh, struggling in America and all these other countries too. Please make sure you make dua, right? Because we're crushing pride and we always think about others in the community, right? All right, next question. Next question. Let's see. That's why, let's wait with you. Okay, well, so, 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 okay. So, uh, Khan, I think it was Sam Khan, I think, question number eight. I think I, I saw, saw Khan. 
All uh, right, Harun Khan says nine. Okay, Harun, I'll get you next one, right? But right now I got it for Sam Khan. Which prophet was tested by people? Okay, let's see here. I can't see here because, you know, I got a, okay. Which prophet was tested by people wanting to kill and crucify him? Ooh. Was it Adam alayhi salam, Sulaiman alayhi salam, Prophet Isa alayhi salam, Prophet Shaq alayhi salam? They wanted to kill. Man, that's, ooh, man. Okay, okay, I see people answering. All right, all right, all right, all right. Let's go. And the answer is, <laughs> Prophet Isa alayhi salam, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala was so merciful, he took him up, and he said, at the end of time, he's going to come back. But so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protected Omar Hussein. Good job on that answer, too, buddy. So all these guys, all right, all right, all right, I like it. Next question. Let's go with the next question. Okay, what do we got here? So fast. Okay, who else? Who else? Okay, uh, I'm trying to see a new fan. Okay, okay, we're so fast. Okay, everyone's saying 7777. All right, Ayan Aziz. Yeah, okay, we got it. Okay, so we're going with seven right now. Number seven, which prophet had both his parents pass away before he? He was six years old, man. By the age of six years old, man, Allah protect of us. And I want you guys to all make dua that our parents have long, righteous lives and give, uh, and, uh, say, I mean, all you guys, right? And make dua for them. And that's why a good dua we want to say is, You make dua for our parents. All right, make sure you do that. Let's see what we got here. People are asked, which prophet had that challenge? Okay, Zinab, all right, Salah, good job answering BBK. And the answer is, Ustad is Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Good job. Excellent, 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 excellent. I like it. I like it. Man, we got some good kids here, Mrs. Ahmad. What do you think here? I, I, I'm impressed. We're very impressed. Imran Nur Muhammad. I think we didn't choose him. Okay, what, which number did he give? And there's a set up too. Set up we didn't get also. So, okay, number nine. Did they get number nine? What did Imran Muhammad, Nur Muhammad get? Imran Nur Muhammad. Which number did he have? I think uh five oh no that's gone five okay was it five okay imam nur muhammad and then then we had the other individual i just said had number nine so we'll go five then we'll go with nine because okay yeah. so let's go question number five which prophet was tested by being thrown in okay let's see i gotta move uh mrs ahmad's uh a little small picture around so i can read the thing in a well by his brother you're just blocking my you're blocking me mrs ahmad <laughs> in the, on my screen i'm just kidding which prophet was tested by being thrown in a well by his brothers what if your brothers, you'd be like, yeah, that is, that is, whoa. Is it Prophet Ibrahim by this time? Their brothers decided to throw him in the well. Prophet Idris, Prophet Musa, Prophet Yusuf, who was thrown in the well? Man, that must have been tough. Thrown in the well. This is like no light, no flashlight in there, waiting for someone to get them. And when finally, when they pick, find him, guess what they do? They're like, well, you know what? I think we can sell him. SubhanAllah. And he was so patient after later on when he sees his brothers, he forgives them. What a merciful, because Allah is so merciful. When you show mercy to someone, Allah will show you mercy to you. So who could it be? Let me see. Prophet Yusuf, alayhi salam. Yes, that is correct. Good job, families. Yes, 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 yes. And I know you guys, some of you guys were asking about, hey, Kahoots, I know we're going to try to, we're trying to figure out a way to get a lot of people on there at the same time making it work. So I know we're going to try to get that point system going. But you guys, keep on telling other people how exciting these games are. All right, because we have one every month now. And different kind of hats, too, because I'm styling with my new hair <laughs> and my bow tie. <laughs> yeah, I know, Mr. Khadi's bald, I know, but, you know, hey, I, I just, you know, my new style. And the last question, number nine. Let's go. Oh, okay, we're going to change it up a little bit here. Okay. Which boxing champion was stripped of his championship belt and lost millions of dollars because of his belief and said, hey, you know what, I'm not going to go. I hurt other people in Vietnam, that's going to be unacceptable. I'm going to follow my dean and, and practice. And for four years, in his prime challenges, he was not able to participate and lost millions of dollars. Mike Tyson, may Allah SWT bless him and make it easy for him, as he's going to have a fight next week too. Muhammad Ali, the greatest of all time. Float like a butterfly, sting like a bee. I like MCC. That's what he told me. <laughs> Prince Nasi, who a famous guy from England, he used to be a good boxer too. Ooh, Khabib, he also, mashallah, you know, all uh, right. So let's see. It was, ooh, someone said, Zinab said D, or was it B, or could it be C? Finally, Miss Ustada Maryam, show it to me. Answer. 
Muhammad Ali. And may Allah SWT forgive his sins and give him a high place in Jannah for those as he had passed away. But yes, he was a person in his prime time because of his beliefs. He stuck to his belief, changed his name, all these other factors. And they wanted to kind of punish him for it. But Allah SWT, he was very peaceful. So uh, that was very fun. Oh, I appreciate it. Thanks a lot, Kamran, man. That's good. All that Hafizab and all the other family members. Thank you so much. And thank you, Sheikh. And thank you, Mrs. Ahmad. Thank you, Ustada Maryam. Thank you to the tech squad from behind the scene, which is Asma Shafiq and Azam Tai. They always be doing all these things here. And so may Allah reward all of you guys. And inshallah, have a hopefully a good few day holidays. Eat well, be good, say bismillah, make dua, be glad, be grateful for everyone. And make sure you make dua for the school, the parents, the teachers, administration. And everyone else, Jazakallah khair, Barakallah fee. Everybody, did you enjoy my hair? All right, just, just making sure it's okay. okay now, now, now I see myself. All right, go ahead, Mrs. Ahmad, take it away. All right, Salam alaikum. Thank you so much. Uh, that was a wonderful game, very uh, inspirational. We learned a lot about our prophets, mashallah. Thank you to our, our Sheikh. Uh, thank you, Sheikh Ibrahim, for your inspirational talk, really words of wisdom we can take away with us. And also, as, as Mr. Kadri says, we always thank our tech team. We thank uh, Ms. Sumaya, our marketing as well, who uh, does all the work behind the scenes to put this program together. And uh, with that, please be safe. Enjoy with your immediate families at home. Enjoy the break. And we will see you bright and early next Monday morning, inshallah. Have a wonderful, safe uh, break. And uh, we'll see you soon, inshallah. Take care. Until next month. Assalamu alaikum. Wow.